read the rough draft, then they read the self-review, and they are to comment. This is a conversation. They are to comment to the self-review and not to the essay. And so here you can see in number three, like you stated earlier, this student is actually talking to the, to the self-review. And then the third peer reviewer talks to the, the self-review and the peer review. So it's extending this conversation about, okay, yes, I, I see where you're being personal, but I think you need to do this. I have a sample both rough draft and final draft in the handout that you've been given. Here I want to point out that this student took the comments and actually started to attribute to the author, which was one thing that was one of the issues that was raised in the peer review. And then here in this next, next example, the same, the same paragraph, this is paragraph five, the student was told that she was using too many long quotes. And so in her, in her uh, revision, she actually shortened the quotes and used more of her own words to explain her writing, which is a difficult step for students to make, especially in first year. Where am I? I have about three minutes left? Okay. So I, I did ask students through an informal survey a couple of things. One of those things was, how, what did they think about the peer review conversation? And two comments stood out to me. One was that students said that they wished they could do multiple peer reviews. I actually have had a couple of students, after doing their self-review, stop peer reviewing and start revising. Because now that they've done this very in-depth self-review, they did not feel that they could, that their writing was, that they wanted to extend it out there to everybody else. And so I've started to work on doing a self-review, having a half an hour of revision, and then doing the peer reviews so that students can actually, so I've been, I'm, I am just, you know, working reflecting and constantly changing this it, process. It, it created the anxiety of an academic community of practice. Huh? Yes, Don't want to show actually, it to anybody else. It, exactly. <laughs> um, and then the self-review, one student said his self-review was so thorough that nobody else commented anything, commented <laughs> further. So I wonder if I need a second set of questions for So a court, very similar to what was found in the other, in the research that I looked at, and by the way, the research that I've examined, the research that I've mostly found is working in, in um, second language classrooms. And so there's very little of these findings in, in composition classrooms. So I am seeing the same findings that we've already seen in the studies, but in a new context. And that is that the comments are mo more robust. Uh, there are global revisions, students remaining on task, I can easily monitor the peer review process. At, in the survey, students are starting to say, and in conversations with students, they feel like they are peer reviewers and that they are in this community, that they are more aware of who their audience is, and they feel like they're participating in this community of writers, and they're coming to class more prepared and more eager to participate. I even had students, when they cannot participate, say, can you please ask somebody in class to um, to peer review with me out of class, or they sent, they'll email me their paper and say, I can't come to class, you're, but I want to you're participate. You're gathering data on all of this? Huh? You're gathering data yes, on all of this? Yes, I have a lot of data, and that's kind of my problem. So I have a lot of data, and um, I'm reworking the peer review conversation a little bit, like I said, to do multiple um, self-reviews. I'm experimenting, playing around with one class where they're doing a self-review on a Monday outside of class. Um, revising, then coming in and doing another self-review the day of peer review, and that I will be grading, giving them points. They get, they get points for peer review for just doing it. So they'll get points for doing that self-review and doing two self-reviews. Um, I can also track changes in Wiki, and I need to be more, um, more aware of what's going on in the Wiki as students are revising, because they are revising now in the Wiki, and so I can look at those revisions. I want to do a formal survey. And then I need to analyze all this data because I have a lot. And, I ha and right now all I have is, like Larry said, me telling you what I'm finding, but I can do a much better job at, at formally analyzing this data. And then eventually I'd like to experiment where I'm not in the classroom, I'm not the teacher, go and look at it in somebody else's classroom to add that distance, and then also look at different face-to-face -face scenarios. So I want to acknowledge all of these people who helped me with my PowerPoint slides. All of these people peer reviewed my PowerPoint slides, both face to face and online, actually. And it was, it's really helpful that that, that is to, 
I'm, I'm being more hyper aware of the peer review process. Did they follow your guide? <laughs> no, I didn't give them questions, and I did ask certain people to focus on certain things. Thank you very much. In the GER moment, you said you had 20% who brought in their uh, manuscripts for, for peer review. What is it now? In the class that peer reviewed on Thursday, I had eight students show up and seven had, because um, as time goes on in community college, you lose students. Yeah, so I've consistently it, it might be, had it might eight. be pretty well, be a good idea just to get some baseline and then yes. also for some other teachers' classes just to um, give some sort of a context for what you're doing. Definitely. Yes. Just interestingly, um, you mentioned that sometimes you were seeking distance from your students and that that was something that you thought was favorable. Um, whereas that is a complete maybe opposite of where my work valued the intimacy and the perspective that could only come from being very close to students. So, and I, well, that's I, fine. I just wanted you to um, talk about why you chose distance as being good and just frame this it this way. is why in my classroom I talk a lot about community of learners we talk a lot we map it on the board we talk about what it means I don't think every teacher is going to be doing that as much as I do and so I want to go and see a teacher who's not a learning science major and not an LCLE major who is a master's has an MFA and is teaching composition and how they using network peer review, how that might look different. It's really because I come at the class from this framework, and I tell them, this is the framework I'm coming from. So it's just personal, want to see what happens. If it's, it, to it, see it, how spreadable the practice is. Can other teachers use it, or does it have to be me? Is there any way you can track how much you do that? Because, I mean, if the major impact isn't the peer review teaching, but how well we buy into the, the narrative that, that Tara is presenting us, that we're all a community here. Next semester, I would Yeah, because I mean, if, if, if you could just get a sense of, of how much that is an element of it, because I, I suspect, as, as you suggest, it, it is a very strong element of it. Excellent. I would do that. I write down my lesson plan so it wouldn't be hard. Yes, Dan. So I'm wondering, so the reason I was late, sorry, was because I, I was in a video conference with the uh, writing program directors for all of the Ivy Tech community college campuses. And all the IE and there's a move underway. There's a lot of pressure to standardize. It's a huge issue with transferring credits and the comparability of the what your students do, like whether or not 111 counts as W131. It's all very complicated. It's all really new to me. And mostly what I was doing there was trying to insert Terra into this mix as a potential dissertation topic and early inquiry project. So I wonder. It, how do you, what do you think you're going to find? The little task that, that, that I think we have for you is to do initially a survey of how, because every single student in the state who graduates from Indiana University has to get credit for W131. And there's a lot of different ways that you can get it. And so one of the things that they've asked that you might want to do as part of your scholarship is to study, to, to, to do a, an initial look at all of the different ways to just get credit for W131. So my question to you is, how much of the, and look at, for instance, peer review. So my specific question is, do you think you'll find anything like this in any of the other campuses? And, and how, how's that going to, how's that work in all of us? Like, do you think that the, the writing program directors will care about it? And, I know that my writing program director at Bloomington is really excited about it. Do I think other people are doing it? No, because they're writing movie reviews in English 111. They're not writing the types of academic writing that I teach, because I know coming from, also have taught at four-year college and coming from a ret comp background. Um, I, just for those of you that don't know, Dan knows this, I'm the only ret comp instructor at Ivy Tech Bloomington. The only person with a ret comp background. A ret comp? Ret, oh, sorry. Um, rhetor I have a master's degree in rhetoric and composition. And the other instructors at either have a master's degree in literature or in MFA, I'm the, um, which is Master's of Fine Arts. I am the only person coming at this through, coming at teaching this class through this lens on that campus. And that is 
really very similar across all of the campuses. And so it's really, it's like I said when, I, when you asked, it's really hard for me to compare myself to what is happening in most classes because I am a definitely a, a kind of an anonymous. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Is, is how will that? Will, do you think that that might constrain the generalizability of this practice? Do you think that other, like like, if somebody asked you to do this, somebody else came up with this. You this you took this pretty naturally. You quite remarkably seemed to figure out exactly what needed to happen here and did it. Uh, I think that there's a possibility that it's a probability that won't be the case with other instructors. I don't know. Instructors are excited. I have. One of the MFA, one of the instructors of the MFA wants to do it, and I've even approached an intro to business instructor just because I've talked to him all the time, and he wants to do it. So I think that that teachers want a way to bring 2.0 into the classroom, and that this is a kind of a natural way for them to, to do that, and and they like what I say about it and what it, how it changes writing. So I think they might. Any other questions? Thank you. We're very very. Much.